Hey folks, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're taking a look at Risk. Yes, Risk. Board Game Brawl has officially jumped the shark right when we were getting started. It's over. I'm closing all the doors, shuttering the windows, you know, turning the lights off. It's done. It's over with. We're done. Let's get out of here. Well, anyways, yes, this is Risk, Plants vs. Zombies. It's not that bad, trust me. Uh, this is by US, published by USAopoly and designed by, who knows? Because Hasbro and USAopoly don't bother to credit their designers in the box. I could have looked it up on Board Game Geek, but honestly, it probably it may not even be there. I don't know. I don't know why they can't be bothered to say who actually had a, a hand in creating their games. But anyways, if you don't know anything about Risk, Risk is the game of world domination. And in the game of world domination, you are basically have all these little uh, troops representing... Oh, come on. You know what Risk is all about. You're trying to wipe all your opponent's troops off the map. It goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It never ends. You just, you just play until someone gets mad enough to flip the entire table over. And then that's it. Everyone uh, agrees never to ever to play it again until six months later at the family function, someone says, Hey, let's play Risk. And everyone's like, Yeah, okay, I love Risk. No one loves Risk, but you feel compelled to play it. I don't understand why, uh, but I'm exactly like that with Risk. Risk was my favorite board game growing up, and trying to get friends and family members to play it was a game in and of itself, really, a game that I rarely ever won. But anyways, if you, uh, this is Plants vs. Zombies Risk. Now, that's probably what caught your eye. Plants vs. Zombies is an awesome little uh, game that you can get for, I don't know, iOS, Android, uh, PC, uh, PlayStation Network, Xbox Live, you can get it all over the place. Uh, I'm not sure how it plays on anything but the iOS, but it's an awesome tower defense game. I would say it's the tower defense game. They just came out with a sequel that supposedly every bit is awesome. I haven't had a chance to play it, uh, but it's a really fun game where basically you control uh, basically a field of plants that are trying to hold off zombies that are trying to get into your house and eat you. And you're getting all kinds of different plants like pea shooters, which uh, they're little anthropomorphic plants that could shoot the zombies and sunflowers to give you energy to b make better plants and to grow more plants and uh, big walnuts that can protect you. I mean, it's all kinds of fun stuff, right? So it didn't seem like a natural fit <laughs> to take that theme and put it on risk, but why not? They've done it with everything else. But does it work? Is it just risk with different art? Well, Let's take a look. You can decide for yourself, but then I'm gonna tell you what you should think for yourself. All right, so the funny thing about Plants vs. Zombies Risk is that it's actually split up into two separate games. Let's take a look at the traditional Risk side of the board. Although, even though it's a traditional Risk side of the board, you can notice that it's very, very different. Basically, this takes place in the mythical world of the Plants vs. Zombies games. Uh, and this is only a two-player game. Most games of Risk go up to, what, six players, I think, at least, depending on the game of Risk that you're playing. But this only goes to two. Therefore, it's a much smaller map, and you also have neutral units out on the board, which are these, like, little uh, lawn gnomes. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll show those off a little bit later. But basically, it, the rules of the risk of Risk are still basically the same. You have all these units, which are the plants and zombie units, and they're going to, you're going to try to invade and take over territory. If you're the attacker, you roll a number of dice, uh, depending on how many units you're committing to the battle. Uh, it has to be, you always have to leave a unit behind. You can go with up to three units and therefore roll up to three dice, but if you win the battle, you have to move at least that many units. You're rolling, trying to get the highest numbers possible. If you're the defender, you can defend with up to two units, as many units as you want, up to two that are in that square. And uh, they include two different types of dice for this. Uh, these, the gray ones are supposed to be for the zombies. The green ones are supposed to be for the plants. Uh, you're trying to just uh, mash up numbers and ties go to the defender. Whoever wins each die roll, however many minutes they, units they committed, they're gonna take units off the board, yada, yada, yada. At the start of your turn, you're always gonna get at least three units back. And you can also get more units depending on the number of territories you have. And also in particular to Plants vs. Zombies are the little station wagon tokens that you have, which are going to give you an additional bonus troops, possibly, if you control them. Let's look at the components a little more in depth. So each player is going to choose either plants or zombies, and you're going to take some miniatures at the beginning, and they're really actually pretty cool. So the one little pea shooter plant represents one unit, and this one obviously represents three units. And for zombies, you're going to have... Uh, 
one little guy here. Oh, isn't he adorable? And this, of course, represents three. And it's cool because it's got like the little cone in the bucket like from the video game. And you're going to place those out on the board according to setup. You can also gain more during the course of the game. And also, depending on your setup, whether you're advanced or doing the regular version, you're going to have these little lawn gnome tokens which go. And you'll put mul multiples in separate spaces. Uh, so you, there could be more than one there. But each one represents basically a neutral unit that you have to take out. If you try to invade one of those units, your opponent is going to roll for those units the maximum number of defense dice possible as if they were actually his units. Uh, trying to hold that territory, but that could stimmy both players. Now, the other really important thing that makes this different than traditional risk is that you have objective tokens. You'll have eight that you'll randomly distribute because they have another a welcome mat side. You'll just randomly distribute those eight tokens up at the top of the board and simultaneously reveal all of them. And basically, if you at the end of your turn, if you meet the condition on one of these objectives, you can claim it. You can only claim one per turn, however, but if you get three of them, you win the game immediately. So for instance, objective, control the Sierra Bella region. Well, the Sierra Bella region, you're going to look at the colors on the map, which is a little bit confusing. They don't make it that clear, but that is this whole region of the board. So if you have control at least one unit in each of the regions on that purple region, at the end of your turn, you're going to get to claim that. This objective is control all station wagons. These station wagons will be seated throughout the board. Now, normally these are just gonna let you get uh, potentially more units at the beginning of your turn. But uh, with this objective, if you can control all of those, you'll actually be able to claim that. Uh, there are also strategic sites. So control observatory and graveyard. You're gonna look at the board and there are little icons there, like up here at Mount Brainier, there's the observatory. And then uh, the graveyard is somewhere out here. There it is. There's a graveyard. Uh, and so if you can control both of those at the end of your turn, you can claim it, and so on and so forth. Now, also, every time you successfully invade at least one territory, whether you defeat an opponent there or you just move into an empty spot, you're going to get to take a card of your faction. So you have the plant cards and you have the zombie cards. You'll just draw one randomly off of the stack and they'll do different things. Now, you can always use cards at the beginning of your turn for their coin value and try to trade in to get more and better, or, or I'm sorry, just more units. You have a little key down here at the bottom that explains how. Basically, if you turn in a number of cards that have at least two coins at the start of your turn, you get two extra units, three coins will get four, four coins will get seven, and it escalates from there, etc., etc. But a lot of times you're going to want to use them for their special effect. Now, all cards will have a different special effect that are going to, and as I said, these are all thematic to the game. These are all different types of vegetables. Uh, and once, once uh, the card allows you to play it, you can use it. You'll discard it immediately, ignore the coins, and do whatever it says. So, for example, for the squash, uh, play when zombies invade a territory you control. You can roll a die. Add that many units to the defending territory. That's really good. The Doom Shroom. Play when zombies invade a territory you control. Roll a die. Destroy that many units from the invading territory. That's really good. Uh, the Jalapeno. Play at the start of your turn. Destroy one zombie unit in each of one adjacent territories with more than one unit. So those are really good. But the zombies have their own little tricks up their sleeve as well. The Bungie Zombie. Play after the dice have been rolled for a battle. You may reroll any or all of your dice once. Uh, the Zombie bobsled team play when you declare an invasion roll a die add that many units to the invading territory and we'll just do one more there we go the buckethead zombie play when plants invade a territory you control add one to your defense for the duration of this invasion to all your defense dice for the duration of this invasion so you need to make the decision do you save these to try to get more units or do you try to use the special effects but basically that is the gameplay of risk it's still traditional risk you roll when you invade a territory you're either going to try to wipe your opponent off the map or, more commonly, claim three objectives before your opponent does. But there is another side to this game of Risk versus Plants versus Zombies. All right, so on the other side of the Risk board is the Skirmish side, which is a different mode of playing the game that uses some of the mechanics from Risk, but is essentially a different game. So the setup's a bit different as well. So each side is going to start with exactly 30 units in their reserve space of their side of the board. So obviously this is the plant side and the other side of the board is the zombie side. 
So you have your 30 units, and you're also going to have these special skirmish upgrades, which are, there's going to be six for each player that are different. And you'll at the end of every turn, you're going to get to draw one of the same cards that you got from the traditional side of the risk board. And at the start of your turn, you can choose, well, you can always choose to use those cards for their special abilities, and they work mostly the same as in the traditional risk side. However, you can also use the coins that you would normally get on the risk side for buying units to instead buy one of these upgrade cards. Now, we'll get back to those in a minute, but actually one of the first things you do on your turn is roll two dice. So you always use two dice for each side. When you roll the dice, you're gonna choose one of the die that you rolled to determine how many units you get to put out for the turn. And the other die is gonna be how many of those different, of, uh, different territory, units in a territory that you're going to be able to activate. So you can only have three units, you can only place three units max into a territory, although cards might let you put even more than that in a territory. So for instance, uh, you could place, I could place three units here for the plants. Maybe I put one here if I decide to use the four. And then I can use the three, that means I can activate both of them on the turn. Now what can you actually do with your activations? Well, you can decide to just do a normal ground attack. When you do a ground attack, let's say for instance, so the zombies have been putting out guys as well. If either side decides to do a ground attack, it's basically risk rules, except that you don't have to worry about leaving a guy behind, so you can roll as many dice as you have units and try to get successes and take out your enemy's units. But more than likely, you're going to try to use your special ability. So what the plants can do is actually make ranged attacks. They must always fire in a straight line. They can't fire behind them. This Again, this is just like the video game. And you're basically going to roll dice. And at the start of the game, you're going to hope that you get sixes. But you could get upgrades that let you uh, hit on fives and sixes as well. Basically, every successful die roll that you make, you're going to knock out a zombie. But remember, this takes activation. And you're always going to roll a number of dice equal to the... Uh, amount of units that you have in a territory. So that's when you would actually be able to roll more than two dice. Now the zombies are a little bit different, again thematic to the game, because the zombies have an extra step. At the start of their turn, so zombies always have to start here on like the, t the tiles over here, or the sidewalk. At the start of the activation, before you even uh, determine how many units you're going to activate and what they're going to do, every zombie unit on the board gets to automatically move forward one. Now, if they already are right next to a plant unit, they get to eat, which is essentially like an attack. If they roll a four, five, or six, I believe a four, five, or six, they're gonna get to automatically eat one of the plant units. Again, this is very thematic to the game. Then with their actual actions, they can choose to move forward more, they could choose to make a ground attack, etc. And that turns into basically like risk. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of these upgrade cards, however, because those are usually going to make a bit of the difference. Oh, I should point out, once you're out of units from your reserves, you are out. Some cards may let you get more, but essentially that's what you have for the whole game. The first player to knock out all of his opponent's uh, units, well, I'm sorry, the plants want to wipe out all of the zombie units. The zombies only need to get one of their troops onto the front porch, and then they win. Again, thematic to the game, but let's look at some upgrades. So for instance, the Tall Nut. For two coins, you may add one to your highest defense die. When you buy an upgrade, you'll put it on the applicable spot on your board to show that you bought it. The, here's my favorite, the Gatling P. For four coins, your range attacks now hit on fives and sixes. Very important to get that early. Um, and probably the best one though is the Lawnmower. Uh, you buy it, and then the first time a zombie enters the front porch, they're automatically destroyed, and each group of zombies in that row is destroyed on a roll of four or higher. So basically the lawnmower kicks off and runs down the row. For the zombies, we have the flag zombie. For each move action, you may move a group of zombies up to two territories instead of one. That really puts the pressure on the plants. Uh, their ultimate one, Dr. Zomboss, you may add five destroyed zombie units back to your reserves, one time use only. Uh, the newspaper zombies, you may take one extra action each turn. So basically, uh, you're going to try to buy upgrades. You're going to try to, uh, plants are going to try to hold off the zombies and wipe them all out. The zombies are going to try to break through the ranks and get to the front porch. A very different way to play risk in Plants vs. Zombies Risk. So, um, 
I'm not exactly sure what I was expecting when I got Risk Plants vs. Zombies. I mean, I saw it coming down the pipe on the pre-order page, and I'm like, well, that's interesting. I like Plants vs. Zombies, and I had awesome success with the last Risk game that I bought, which was Risk Legacy. Uh, but the problem is, without going into a full review, and I don't know how I'm going to review this game without giving spoilers, but uh, Risk Legacy, no one liked it because it was Risk. Everyone liked it because it had this awesome evolution mechanic. And in fact, a lot of people will miss out on ever playing it because, and miss out on a really great game because it's still at its core risk as far as the gameplay goes. It's all the other extra stuff that's awesome. Uh, so, Risk Plants vs. Zombies, there's a very real possibility that much like most of their other themed versions of Risk, that it was still Risk. There's nothing really that special about it. Maybe it's a waste of money. But I got it cheap, and I wanted to try it. And you know what? It's okay. What I can say resoundingly is that it's an okay game. Now, <laughs> people hate Risk for a reason. And when I was playing the traditional, quote-unquote, Risk side of the Plants vs. Zombie board, I remember those reasons. I was infuriated at various points by having an enormous army that should, you know, thematically just walk right through my opponent's two troops just get decimated by dice rolls that you have no control over. None. Zero. Zip. Uh, it's not a good feeling. And this game brought back all those old feelings I used to have about Risk. Uh, but having said that, this version does enough unique things, I believe, to warrant a look. If you like off-the-wall versions of Risk, like Godstorm and 2210 and Legacy. Uh, on the traditional side, it's only two players. Uh, and like, like you saw in the overview, it gets crowded out there. You know, you've got all those gnome units that are taking up space. It makes it feel very much like Small World. But I think it's kind of cool. I think that you, having the ability to place your units in such a way that you use the gnomes as buffers is something really good. But then you might have a, a big old stack of gnomes between you and what you need to get to. And that's a problem. So they still act like normal defenders. So you have to weigh that. And I think that's very interesting. I think that's another type of decision in the game. In a game that doesn't really have all that many decisions. Uh, at least traditional risk. Uh, the objective system. Now, they also have used the objective system in a lot of uh, other recent risk releases. And it's a great success because the probably the biggest issue outside of the whole dice roll, dice checking, pure random based attacks that this game has is uh, it just goes on forever. Even in a two player game, if you had to wipe out your opponent, it would it wouldn't take nearly as long as like a big normal version of risk, but too long still for what this game is with objectives though you've got something quick to fight over and they're very thematic to the game the whole station wagon thing is also very cool another way to add troops i like that so uh that's the thing this game this game has a really great theme it kind of relies on its theme even with the extra little bits that i was just describing that i think are cool it still wouldn't be all that great but having that plants versus zombies theme having a very colorful board and all the different uh very bad pun locations uh, is still cool. I mean, it you know it, it it you know. Speaking of the components, the board is crap. I mean, the board has like warping and stuff. I didn't ex I expected that from a a USAopoly Hasbro licensed game. Uh, the cards are also awful. The cards look like literally someone went to Office Depot and took whatever stock they had and then cut them out themselves with a one of those paper cutters. Where I work in the printing industry, so it drove me nuts. Uh, so that's all, but, but still like the art on the cards is awesome. The, you know, having the different types of uh, using, being able to use the cards, not just for turning in, but for, uh, special abilities is really, really cool. I like that. And, you know, the artwork's all very good. So that was a good part. And I love the little miniatures. They did a good job with the little miniatures for the plants and the zombies. Uh, like that a lot. So that was, you know, some people might buy this game just for that. I don't know what you're going to do with them, but whatever. So I really dug that. Now, the other side of the board is, I, is what I think is going to draw people to this game. Because the other side of the board, having basically, it, it is Plants vs. Zombies, the video game, right there as a little board game, but not nearly as interesting. <laughs> now, it, it, what, it is cool having those skirmish upgrade cards and being able to turn in cards to buy some of those uh, or instead use them as a special ability. That's, you know, there's some interesting decision-making there. I love the dice mechanic. 
uh, on the skirmish side of the board of being able to roll the two dice and then choosing, am I gonna use this die for getting more units? Am I gonna use this die for doing more actions? I really need more actions now because I've got zombies coming down every single row if you're on the plant side but I don't have that many units out. I really need more units too, but you have a finite amount of units as well. Uh, I actually, uh, I would say that it's a little unbalanced in favor of the plants. I don't think this, I don't think they cared about balance when they made this game, but it's definitely unbalanced in favor of the plants because of their ranged attacks. And, but I will also say that a valid strategy that worked for my zombie opponent, even when he was on the ropes was just piling all your guys into one row, especially when you get down to, when everyone runs out of units, uh, it's really, really difficult. I held on by a thread for most of that game because I was able to use the shovel to just keep moving my existing plants into the row that he was just swam swarming me on, but eventually my luck ran out with the dice because the combat still comes down to random dice rolls. You can buy a couple upgrade cards that mitigate that, but it's you know, it's still risk. It's, it's the core mechanic is still risk, but that is definitely the better way to play this game. The skirmish side of the board is very interesting. Um, I'm probably going to take it to another game group of mine just to show people because it's, people are going to say risk, ah, but <laughs> that other side of the board is cool enough, especially for people that are fans of Planes vs. Zombies. So what's my final summation of this? Like I said, it's okay. It's an okay game. It's not bad. I think that if you like risk and you want more people to be willing to play it with you this is the way to go if you like plants vs zombies and you're into board games i you know i think it's pretty much your only option there's other tower defense games but as far as the plants vs zombies theme i'm sure there's some other little knockoff crap games but this is probably the best of them um overall for how much it costs and for what it is I'm happy with my purchase i'm glad that i got it i think that if you like risk if you like plants vs zombies give it a shot uh, it's very interesting, neat little miniatures, neat little cards, very thematic. What can I say? Not the greatest thing ever, but what is really these days? Well, Risk Legacy is, but it's no Risk Legacy. But anyways, uh, I hope that helped make you an informed consumer. My name is Nick. This has been Board Game Brawl, reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care. Watch out for zombies.